Well, I think that Gold is playing with fire. The Trump administration, no fan of having any Bloomberg reporters covering its campaign now that Michael Bloomberg has entered the race. He, uh, Michael Bloomberg himself, the former New York mayor, a multi-billionaire, as you know, entered the race as an alternative, a more moderate alternative to the president. Uh, but again, uh, in, in trying to tell his news organization not to do any exposés on me or my Democratic colleagues, he might have compounded the problem to Media Tech Capital Partners' managing partner. Porter Bibb, a uh, media industry icon, f covering these developments. Um, what do you make of this back and forth here? Well, I think he has two. Bloomberg has two problems. One is Trump, and the other is Bloomberg LP. Right. Because he's he's got to keep it neutral. He, he uh, uh, Micklethwaite, uh, his editor in chief, put a big memo out that everybody paid a lot of attention to. Saying, Mike said, "Cover me, but cover everybody else, and don't put any favors on." But by the My same campaign. token, exposés that they were doing on other candidates, they stopped doing They're, now. That's right. So with the best of intentions, <laughs> it's actually created more of a fire. It's, it's an issue. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've never had a media candidate run for president. And it, these are new issues that are going to have to be resolved one way or the other. Refresh my memory. You were educating me a little during the break here. How did he handle this when he was mayor, three-term mayor of New York well, City? Well, he was lucky he had no real opposition. So, yeah. uh, and, he, and he spent $100 million. But he didn't divorce himself from no, the company, No, he, right? absolutely not. And, and what's interesting is uh, he, he hasn't said what he's going to do with the company if he were a absolutely going to win um, in 2020. Uh, he, he could put it in trust. He could diverse, divorce himself. I've heard some crazy rumors that, oh, he's going to sell it between now and <laughs> next November. But right. that's not going to happen. Um, will his, this is going outside your purview, but just yeah. curious, he has a lot of money. Uh, will that make a difference in the race? When you talk to people, what do they it, say? It's, it, it depends. I mean, look look at Tom Steyer, for example. He's, right. He spent uh, tens of millions, may, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars on television commercials. They're, they're nice. They're, they're bland. They, they're not compelling. They don't sock you between the eyes and say, I've got to see more about this guy. It's how you use the media. And Bloomberg is a master at manipulating the media. So I think it's going to be a, a big game changer for the Democrats. And his ads, regardless of what you think, of, they're very nice. They're very impressive. So the, he <laughs> obviously right. can get the best talent. That's right. Get it. Um, you and I are also talking briefly about the notion of if the president is reelected, will he be a tougher judge and, and be uh, apply more scrutiny to media mergers more based on perceived bias than anything else. I, I think that if, if, if a particular company is very strongly against the administration, yes, that's going to impact any chance that they have to do business that might have to be regulated by the government. But actually, I think that the, what, what we're looking at is more consolidation, particularly in the streaming wars. Um, there, there are not going to be a, a dozen winners. There are going to be maybe four companies that survive. and. Uh, and who would they, they be? Well, uh, Disney, of course, right now uh, has the, the, the best chance. Uh, Netflix is not going anywhere. The problem that Netflix is, fa is facing, in five years, they'll have maybe 150 million global subscribers, and so will Disney. But the difference is Disney's making a profit, and Netflix never has. Somebody else is going to have to take over Netflix. So the media world, as you see it, with those major players, what happens uh, after the next election? In other words, streaming is all right. the, the thing. Disney certainly has that in, in spades here. How do you see this all shaking out next year? Well, it's unlikely, for example, that uh, major communications companies, let's say broadcast companies, are going to uh, become more partisan. I think it'll be less because the audiences are. Your audience at Fox is is um, is an interesting size audience, but it's not. It, it it's mostly um, senior citizens. The demographic is way up in the high 60s. Uh, to stay in business and what are the other news channels? I mean, they're they're in the low 60s. Right? <laughs> the others in low, right. yeah, but I'm, this is what I'm saying. No, they're, they're all going to have to change and and modify to hit the demographics that advertisers want. But Disney is, seems to have found that sweet spot, right, Porter, with the other, that, that, that drawing younger viewers. Well, they've, they've got ESPN, which, right. which basically controls most of the live sports rights. They've, they've got uh, ABC, 
for the general audience and the older uh, and female audience. Um, the, in, in their streaming side, they've, they've done a wonderful thing by bundling already, which right. is uh, putting Hulu uh, and ESPN in with Disney+. Plus. That's terrific. And all of the other streamers are going to have to start bundling as well. You see CBS, for instance, is trying to do a dual path. We're going to do original content, and we're going to sell to the other streamers. Uh, CBS is a target. You had Charlie Gasparino yeah, on a few it. minutes ago. He and I in the corridor were talking about who's going to buy. I, I think Verizon is a potential buyer of CBS Viacom. So as most people don't pay attention to Microsoft. But Microsoft has 90 million Xbox users with games, video games. Oh, that's interesting. No, no TV content, no movies, no, no anything else, just those games. They've got to monetize. What about Amazon? I, I, I'm thinking about companies that sit on a lot of cash, Apple. Right. Sitting on a lot of cash. What, what do they do with that? Well, Apple needs content, and they've, yeah. already, they've started to ramp up uh, and put out all kinds of uh, Could proclamations. Could you see them buying a Netflix? Or um, it's very likely. What about Amazon? Uh, I don't think Amazon, they have a different reason for being in streaming. They're basically selling you Amazon Prime, right. free delivery, and the streaming is a bonus. So it's, not, it, it, it's got a, a good content side, but they're, they're not spending $50 billion on, on original content. They're, they're putting one or two good shows and keeping everybody happy because for, for the twelve ninety nine and it cost a month, you get free de delivery, and that's more important to the majority of the public than getting a, a, a whole array of uh, old TV shows. Um, if a Democrat were to take the White House, would the landscape change for these media companies, and if, if so, how so? I, I think it has to. I'm not sure that uh, Democrats or Republicans realize how important it is to regulate the, uh, the Internet. And Europe is, has already done it. The rest of the world is regulating the Internet. You know what the FCC, where it came from in 1934, FDR said Hitler's speeches were mesmerizing the Germans and creating a, 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 a warlike environment. I don't want that to happen in the United States. So he created the FCC hmm. to regulate the Internet. The, 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 the Internet operates in the airwaves. We all own the airwaves. They're public domain. The FCC needs to regulate, to be reshaped, reformed, and look look at how... But you were saying it gets no government money, per se. It, right? It's the, off, the, 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 off the people that, that police. That's police's. the irony. The right. FCC does not get one penny of federal funding, and that's the most important yeah. agency in, in the United States government. They, they get 300 maybe $400 million of the license fees that they charge Fox and AT&T and Verizon and other broadcast and telecommunications companies. They have 1,200 employees. Google, wow. Google has just monitoring YouTube, 10,000 employees. <laughs>